Aloha, I'm Tim Apicella, your host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show focused on traffic and transportation issues. Today's show title and discussion is Ho'opili, Oahu's Future Traffic Nightmare. Ho'opili is an approved 11,750 unit housing development between Eva and Kapolei. How this project was approved and its traffic impact to communities along H1 is what we're going to take a, look at, a close look at. With me today is Dr. Keone Dudley, who's the president of the opposition group Friends of Makakilo. Keone, thank you very much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time to come out to the studio and, and help us with this concept and, and understand the nature of um, some of these building communities. So thank you. Good. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. Really appreciate you bringing me on. Okay. Yeah. I want to ask you, let's define the nature of what Ho'opili is. What's the size? Um, when was it approved? And you know, just let's just look at the definition of it. So, um, what is the size of this of this? Well, it's twelve hundred and twenty-five acres, mm -hmm. and it uh, is a, um, a a piece of property that's really between the second city and the first city. It uh, was planned by Cas uh, by Campbell Estate uh, in the early days. That you know they knew that we needed the second city out there, and so they they started by first of all selling off the the worst lands, and so they sold the land down by the seashore that was uh, very shallow and, and uh, a coral right beneath it. Uh, and then the higher land and the higher land, but they never intended to sell this land. They always intended that it would stay in agriculture. It was the golden triangle. It was the, <clears throat> the best uh, producing land uh, during pineapple time in, this, in the state. And, um, you know, it was just too sacrosanct uh, to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, as the Campbell Estate finally came to an end, uh, they uh, decided that it would be better for the um, beneficiaries if they did sell it off. And so they sold it to D.R. Horton in 2006. I was aware of it shortly after that. Uh, uh, I began to oppose it very strongly. Uh, the Land Use Commission was the first body of government to, to really uh, be uh, put into a position of saying yes or no. Yeah. The Land Use Commission at the time, uh, the Land Use Commission in general, is supposed to protect uh, agricultural land. That's uh, their purpose, to make a real decision about is this necessary or is it not. And Governor Abercrombie at the time uh, filled the Land Use Commission with developers. And uh, there's one seat for a Hawaiian. Everybody else was either a union member or a developer or a prominent member of the development community. And I'm talking about vice presidents of major corporations mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, these guys were, were de uh, determined that they were simply going to get that approved. Yeah. Now, I rem remember reading that we had Governor Cayetano, uh, John, Governor John Wiley. Why, hey? and, and we had, although she didn't provide testimony, uh, to a certain extent, uh, Governor Lingo also was not opposed to the, this being developed. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. During her time, uh, if we could have had this happen at, uh, during her time, we definitely would not have the problem we have right now. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at, and again, correct me if I'm on or off on this statistic, but uh, 11,750 homes are planned? That's right. Are these yeah. homes or a combination of condominiums or...? Um, All kinds of things. Yeah, um, okay. It's supposed to be a live, work, play community, so there's going to be all kinds of little businesses and so forth. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful concept. It's just not needed and in the wrong place. Okay. So we have a proposed 11,750 units of one type or another. Most of them are going to be single-family homes, I'm going to imagine. Yeah. What is our current uh, number of homes approximately in the EVA Plain area? Uh, I think it's about <clears throat> 95,000. We, we have okay. a, 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 something we can bring up on the screen to show us okay, that. Okay, let's take a look at that. Uh, the current homes are 95,072. Uh, and by number, by 2030, we will almost double that with 71,000 more homes. Uh, we will double the cars by 2032. Okay. okay. Uh, let's take a look at the next screen on this, if we could. And that's just uh, H1. That's, that's really important, though, you okay. know, because uh, this, this is where all of the traffic problem is going to go it, it, It's really centered. Uh, if you look at those poles on the right-hand side, you'll see that there are six of them. They're holding up two uh, roadways there. Uh, 
And on the other side, there are six more poles, and they are holding up six, uh, two, two other road, uh, the, 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 the roadways on the other side. There's only 70 feet between these poles. Okay. Now, it used to be that the rules were that you could, uh, a freeway lane had to be 12 feet uh, wide. Mm -hmm. And so you could get five times 12 is 60 with a 10 foot um, uh, margin on the side. They have changed it so that you can now put um, a, a roadway through with 10 feet. Why? Okay. And so this is going to allow us to put one more lane in there. So what Potentially. We, there's no plans for that, right? Well, there actually are plans for it. Okay. Uh, the governor has kind of set that money as, uh, as aside, the whole project aside, but I, th I think that we're going to move ahead with it rather quickly. Okay. And let me ask, when is, um, is this going to be, um, is this going to be constructed in phases? or is it it's all going to take place at one time? And what's the estimate date of, of completion of construction? I have no idea in the world. There, okay. there's, there's no way to tell when it's going to begin, no way okay. to tell when it will end. But it should take a couple of years once, once they begin to work with it. The important thing you know, is that, that there's no more room. You know? So okay. you will never, ever, ever have another freeway lane. That, that's all there is to right. it. Well, we have, what's the approximate commute from EVA to town uh, on average? Is it an hour and 20 minutes? Is it, what's the average commute time? Uh, from my place, it's about an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. About 20 minutes. Yeah. So from the Y and I coast, it's about two hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. You know? so, mm. Okay. So let's look at, um, let's look at the impact stage one. Okay. okay. So let's hypothetically say we've got 11,700, let's just, I even round down to 11,000. <laughs> um, you know, or 12, <laughs> round up to 12, I don't know. Um, so the developer, D.R. Horton, has, has made the promise or the projection that in Kapolei, because of this housing development, there's going to be the creation of 7,000 new jobs. Um, we, I've read that there's going to be a combination of a, um, a research kind of corridor in there, um, restaurants, entertainment, things of that nature. But I would say that the, the, the predominant employment is going to probably be retail. I don't know if that's, that's correct or not, but you have well, to know? Well, okay. In the first place, we've, uh, we have 70,000 homes, including Ho'opili, already okay. zoned. Okay. okay. Uh, in, in every one of those 70,000 homes, they expect an average of two workers. And some, there will be one person. Right. And some, there will be five workers, but an average of two. The <clears throat> Department of Planning and Permitting has said that for the next 30 years, more than half of the people who will live in those homes will come into the city for work. Right. What that means then is that we're going to have 70 more thousand people trying to get into the city. Um, a cop, uh, the uh, Ho'opili project is a part of that problem. Now, we're going to have a new city out there. The Kapolei is, it's, uh, the, road, uh, the, the streets of Kapolei are empty. They're, they're there, but mm -hmm. there's nothing there. We expect that we're going to have a city grow up. Right. Will that take care of all the people out there? No, that'll take care of eventually 70,000. Mm -hmm. But 70,000 more will continue to work in right. the city. Well, the promise of 7,000 jobs is interesting because if I recall um, Mayor Mufi Hanneman, he promised that there would be the creation of approximately 10,000 jobs with mm -hmm. the, um, the construction of rail. Um, I think we're at lucky at best to see <laughs> 1,000. So this 7,000 that's going to somehow um, divert people from getting on H1 to go to town uh -huh. and somehow magically uh, have those people come and work in couple A is, um, I, I find that as an interesting argument. And I guess I'm, I'm wondering if that argument was used as a basis to obtain the permit. Oh, hard to say. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll tell you. Just about just about every argument was used to obtain the permit. Okay. But the the truth of the matter is <clears> that <throat> it would have been obtained no matter what because the the the, the, the situation was greased, you know. And uh, they they were um, the right people were on the land use commission, and they came through with a vote of eight to one. Okay, that's that, a fairly significant number yeah. of approval. Then it went to the city. And mm -hmm. uh, what we found in the city was that they were bought to. Uh, I have a case before the City Ethics Commission right now, okay. uh, which is going to be heard on the 18th of this month. Interesting. And, uh, What's the basis of that? Is that 
um, non-disclosure or conflict of interest, or what was what's the nature of that, that it's basis? The idea just simply that they so they took so much money um, mm -hmm. from this development community that will profit directly from Ho'opili. Okay. Let me tell you how much. Uh, the uh, one person took 43% of their um, money came from these people specifically. Now, that's pretty shocking. This is for their campaign war chest. That's their campaign war chest. Okay. But that's the least. It went up to 91%. One person, 91% of his money that got him elected came from people who will profit directly from Ho'opili. Was that disclosed prior to a, a, a formal vote? Are you kidding? <laughs> is that your claim to the Ethics Commission, that yes. that should have been a conflict of interest and at least disclosed? That was my claim last month. Okay. Th th this month my claim is that they, uh, they just simply uh, could not, because of the amount of money they took, the percentage of the money, they could not have possibly voted against the project. So let me ask you the question, do you think the vote that was taken, is it, is it a valid vote? No. the lack of disclosure? Is that your basis? It, it's not lack of disclosure. Mm -hmm. It's just simply uh, it was an invalid vote because they knew good and well that they were voting against the people. Okay. And the terrible things that would happen because of it, traffic being one of them. Okay. Well, you've, you've already cited very, very strong motivations for a project of this size to be approved. Let me ask you if, um, if you come, have come across uh, whether the rail project was used as a basis to transport these potential 12,000 people down H1 by uh, via the rail. Was, do you think that was used as a basis? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, the terrible thing about the rail is it's been a hoax from the very beginning. You know, the very first step of rail was Parsons, Brinkerhoff, and the city were required to do what's called a farmland conversion impact rating. Mm -hmm. And Parsons, Brinkerhoff had one of their uh, 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 officials do that uh, s uh, survey. And she uh, graded the survey in such a way that the, the, uh, the, the rating was so low as far as problems caused by the rail that uh, they were allowed to go through. I went back and got five other independent people to score the same impact rating, and they scored it double her um, uh, uh, numbers plus Every single one of them, every single one of them. You know, if, if honest people would have scored that at mm -hmm. the very beginning, there would be no rail going through that farmland. Okay, well, we know that, Par I, I know that Parson Breckenhoff was involved with the big dig in Boston. Oh, yes. And I know that that was horribly over budget and yes. uh, fraught with problems, both engineering and, and political. Um, Tell us about some of those percentages. Well, <laughs> from what I understand, um, their cost estimations were off somewhere around 80%, and they're was Just eighty percent pro projected ridership through the tunnels and everything was around seventy five percent off. Now the same company uh, did work in Seattle on our. You know, I'm from Seattle, uh -huh. and uh, we certainly have implemented a light rail system, and that thing was horribly over cost, and um, and way, way, way delayed, and uh, not too dissimilar to what we're experiencing here right now. And of course, I know Parson Brigenhoff has been the consultant here. Um, what's fascinating is, is ridership projections, and that's what I'm really wondering if, you know, I think they're projecting 118,000 average riders per week here in our system here in Honolulu, mm -hmm. okay? If you go f around the country and you look at averages of ridership, you're coming up around 35, 38, maybe 40,000 average ridership. That's a big delta from 118,000. So I guess my question is to you is if, if, any, if it's D.R. Horton or any future developer that's trying to sway the land commission or, or the council that, hey, don't worry about log jam and gridlock because this thing's going to carry 118,000 people on an average basis, a, a weekly average, you know, um, scenario, um, whether or not those projections should really be examined and brought to the attention of not only the council, or the land commission, but really to the general public to say, you know, these are these are falsehoods that are being perpetuated, and we really need to look at that and stop that. Yeah, let's look at real numbers, not not gross projections. And yeah. I I don't know if if your group is uh, diving into that or, or not. Yes, yes, Tim. The the real truth is that they are saying they are going to have twenty eight thousand people every morning and every afternoon come from one way or the other. 
Um, the problem with that is that that means that every single car will be so jammed full there will be absolutely no room for anybody else. 28,000 total. Okay, let's look at now, this uh, slide here. Okay. So this is really fascinating. So we've got 71,000 new commuters, mm -hmm. okay? The morning capacity for a new zipper lane, and we just got a new zipper lane, was 3,000, okay. okay? The capacity for that one freeway lane that I talked about is 9,000. When and if it's built. Yeah. Okay. So what, the, what okay. we've got then is 59,000 more people that we've got to get into the city. Now, we, we find that the rail is saying the cramped full, they can do 28, 29,000 people. What does that leave us? That leaves us 30,000 people mm -hmm. trying to get into the city who have absolutely no way to get there. Well, let's look at the 29, because even if you went with the, um, the average, you know, from some of the cities that have a similar system, a light rail system, you're, you're probably maybe around 38,000. So really yeah. now your delta is 20,000. That's still a lot of more cars to be, um, you know, to be contended with on yeah. a, a very narrow um, corridor. Yeah. And there's no ancillary streets that are going to get you from town, from Eva, and it's H1. It's H1. It's I mean, H1. You know, there's just no room. That area, I mean, when you come to look at that area, there's just no room on either side mm -hmm. to do anything. And, uh, and, uh, and there's no room to go up. There's no room to go anywhere. I mean, you know. Yeah. And, and the, the problem is that our city is so corrupted and our mayor is so corrupted. Okay, hold that thought. <laughs> hold that thought because that's, that's a serious statement. Now, so hold that thought. We're going to take a break. Okay. And this is Tim Apicello. I'm your host for Hawaii, Moving Hawaii Forward. And we'll be right back after this break. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi, and you can catch me on Mondays at 11 on ThinkTech Hawaii. Stacy to the rescue. See you then. Aloha, this is Kelihi Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the ThinkTech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. 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 Tim Apicello, we're back from our break. I'm with, I'm with uh, Dr. Keone Dudley, and he's president of Friends of Makakilo, and we're talking about Ho'opili and some of the traffic impacts that are facing, uh, will, will be facing the H1 corridor. Thank you for, for coming to the show, and I want to touch base on kind of where we left things before the commercial break, and okay. that is we're talking about the, 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 the approval process on how this thing got its permits, Mm -hmm. uh, first from the um, Land Use Commission and then from the Council. Okay. And you mentioned, you know, you mentioned that things may not be on the up and up. Well, they just aren't. You okay. know, uh, the mayor was uh, bought by Pacific Resource Partners, uh, which is a consortium of union and contractors. Uh, first off, let's talk about what mayor? Uh, mayor Caldwell. Okay. He, he was elected with three and a half million dollars from them. Okay. Uh, that allowed him to get in and take over. He's going to do anything that uh, the uh, people, the, the rail people, want him to do. Um, uh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't care about us <laughs> any more than a man on the moon. The problem that we were talking about was the narrow area for things to come through. There right. is no way for any more roads. There is no way for any more anything. But the the whole city government is is planning that they're going to put seventy thousand people out there, seventy thousand uh, the, uh, seventy thousand homes, and the seventy thousand people are going to need to come into the city. There is no way to do it. Okay. There's no way to do it. And, and yet they're coming up with the Oahu general plan. And, uh, and what does that say? It says, so we got 70,000 houses out here and everybody is happy, you know? It's just not going to happen. Well, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here because um, with this project, we're looking at, you know, maybe, what, 2.1 persons per household, maybe 2.2. It's hard to get a, a, a real, you know, firm number on just how many people will occupy each unit. But we're looking at roughly 12,000 units. Okay. Now, you can argue that there are a number of people right now going on H1 from EVA down to down the town 
and that if there is the creation of 7,000 jobs, and if the creation of 7,000 jobs entails entertainment and restaurants and some of the lower paying jobs, mm -hmm. you could argue that people that are now from EVA going to town will actually say, hey, if I can just quit my job here in town and find something in, in um, Kapolei, that's great. I've just shortened my commute. So you could have a subtraction of some of those numbers that are now going to try to realign their, their commute, but it won't be that many. So we're, well, still looking at, we're still looking at a sizable number of new vehicles on the roadway to go to town to pay for those houses that they just moved into. Yeah, yeah. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. And, yeah. and, and, we're going to hit another slide here. Let's get, um, let's get to the definition of where this project lies in, in conjunction to H1. Okay, well, that's the H1 coming across yeah. the, the, the red shirt there. And uh, the red shirt is the uh, Ho'opili project. Mm -hmm. uh, on the right of that is uh, Waipahu Town. Um, uh, below that uh, uh, is Eva Town. And the whole Eva Plain, which is pretty much filled with houses right now. Uh, on the left-hand side is the city of Kapolei um, and uh, Makahilo up above it. Okay. So... I want to talk about your organization that you represent. You're the president of Friends of Makakilo. Right. Tell me about it. Tell me about the organization. Tell me about your role. Tell me about what you've been trying to do to get the, the awareness of this issue before the public. Okay. We are um, a community organization. Uh, we got started about uh, 2006. Uh, we uh, just began with, with concerns about uh, Makakilo itself. Um, uh, we still only have one road in, one road out, and uh, we, um, you know, we're, we were at that time getting more and more houses, and uh, so we had a community meeting. Out of that came uh, a group of people who wanted to work together, and we formed as the Friends of Makakilo. Okay. And um, we uh, eventually, uh, and, and let me just tell you that right now we're about um, 500, 600 people strong. Okay. We um, uh, stay in touch through communications by email primarily. Uh, I send out material about once a week and uh, uh, people respond. Um, we're having a big meeting tonight about Ho'opili right now, as a, as a matter of fact. Okay, tell me about that. Um, the, it's the project about important agricultural lands. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the Constitution uh, was revised in 1978 and required that uh, we preserve uh, important agricultural lands and that each county eventually uh, name what are the important agricultural lands for that county. Now, in 2012, when they finally got around to doing this, they uh, told the Department of Planning and Permitting, the city council did, uh, to include Ho'opili and Coa Ridge in the study. Uh, now the um, uh, committee and the, 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 the company that is uh, doing the project and the Department of Planning and Permitting are having two community meetings uh, specifically to let people know where these important agricultural lands are and get their affirmation. Those, uh, the, uh, they uh, don't, the maps don't include Ho'opili, uh, nor do they include uh, Koa Ridge. And, um, and, and there are reasons for that. But we're just saying that, you know, we, we still have major things in the hopper about Ho'opili mm -hmm. that could win. And that until they, they do win, we don't want these maps uh, what, finalized. What percent did uh, Ho'opili represent as far as percentage of ag land? I really can't tell you no. that. Uh, I heard something like a 32 percent. Was that? Oh, is oh, it 32 okay. percent or? Okay. Um, somewhere, somewhere around 30 to 32? As far as these maps are concerned, mm -hmm. I think it's probably maybe about 3 to 5 percent because okay. it, it, the, the maps are of all the important agri okay. land on, this, on, this, on island. this island. Okay. But Ho'upiri right now is uh, currently producing 32 percent of the food that is produced on Oahu mm -hmm. for the local market. Okay. So when we lose Ho'opili, we're, we lose one third of our uh, farmland for that's currently doing, uh, currently producing food. But isn't, for us. isn't Dr. Horton actually going to provide some ag land in their 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 Ho'opili development? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. They're going to allow people to do to put little farms little in their backyards. 
in in their backyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and they they they've, they've got even some gullies that uh, you know that And that's to address the 32% of food production that's currently taking place? Uh besides that, they uh-huh. also uh, arranged so that the farmers at uh, Ho'opili would be able to farm land up near Wahiawa. Mm-hmm. Now the problem with that is that the the land up near Wahiawa is 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 um covered with clouds most of the time it's very rainy it's very wet and and you can't produce uh, very many good crops up there in the first place okay, so the food production mitigation is not exactly the ideal situation uh, for practicality versus to get the permit it was only two weeks ago that the head of the department of agriculture said uh, no, we haven't got any plans, and uh, we're not. Uh, we haven't succeeded at all in uh, mm-hmm. doubling our food production. Okay. So, so we have a development is almost twelve thousand units. Yeah. What's behind that? What what more are on the horizon? And to what degree is your organization going to put a line in the sand and say enough's enough? Well, I think we put the line in the sand. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, we, we just simply have to do something on this island. You know, and what is that line in the sand? What, uh, define that line. The, the the line is we have reached the carrying capacity of the island. Mm-hmm. We have reached the carrying capacity. We uh, we don't have room in transportation anymore. We don't have the water to support more people. And and as far as the beauty of the island is concerned, are we going to pave over this island or are we going to stop? As far as tourism is concerned, you know, we've, we've got so many tourists right now at the, on our beaches. Is, is there room enough for us? Is there room enough for the future of the people? You know, I mean, there, there are major problems right now. We, we're, we're putting so this up... This is a breaking point of how many people can live on this island. That's right. Is that point? That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we've got rising seas. We've got a problem of uh, the, the, the water on top of the seawater is going to, in a few years, start coming through the surface. And Kaka'ako, Ala Moana, Mo'ili'ili, all around the island. Mm-hmm. We're building these huge, monstrous buildings for, for very rich people. They're all going to move away. We're going to be stuck with these buildings standing up in the middle of a swamp, you know? I mean, it's time for us to stop and say, well, let me, what are um, we doing? Let me throw a quote where I don't have the direct quote, but let okay. me throw a concept that um, Mayor Caldwell threw out there and to address the approval of Coa Ridge, which is a 4,000-unit mm. um, development. Um, and that was, in order to obtain affordable housing, you need to increase the housing supply. Now, in my world... This is such a desirable place to live. It's still paradise in many people's eyes around the world, not just mm-hmm. on mainland. And you can develop every square yard of real estate here on this island, and you'll still have the demand outstrip the supply. And by definition, you will not obtain affordable housing. Yeah. Um, and so if that's his main Econ 101 supply and demand argument for the approval of permit after permit after permit, um, that needs to be challenged. You're right. And, uh, you know, uh, people don't think, uh, you know, they hear that and they say, oh, oh, okay, yeah, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the, the truth of the matter is that it's not people who need affordable housing who are going to be moving into these houses. That's correct. You know, I mean, the, the houses, uh, we, we know right now that our population is increasing. Uh, one quarter of the increase comes from people moving in. Yeah. And those 7,000 less jobs are not going to support the people that are moving in to Ho'opili. That's right. They're just not going to, those aren't going to be the people that will take those 7,000 jobs, if those 7,000 jobs even pan out. And the truth of the matter is, let's take a look. We've got 12,000 houses, we've got 7,000 jobs. That means there are 5,000 houses where there are no jobs available. You know, I mean, we're just creating more problems. Right. Just creating more problems. Well, I want you to come back on this show because I want you to give us updates as you move forward with, in your 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 goal and your strategies against the conversion of valuable ag land to residential developments. Good. So I hope you commit to coming back and um, we'd love to see you back here. Beautiful. I want to thank you. This is Tim Apicella, Moving Hawaii Forward, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 12 noon. Thank you.